So thanks for joining uh, this morning. Um, so let's just jump into a bit. Let's just talk about the market and what's been happening. Um, if you all have been paying any type of attention, this has been brutal, particularly in the tech. If you're holding any tech, uh, the tech market has been um, been beat up the last two weeks. So let's go to the, we'll just start with a little bit of the broader market stuff and then we'll get through. So I'm on a, uh, this is a daily, a daily chart on the, on the Dow. First, I'm gonna go look at the look at the Nasdaq because Nasdaq is is a tech heavy uh, index. So Nasdaq is 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 um, I think it's actually Nasdaq 100. Yeah, so it's a this is a futures, and it basically tracks uh, the the largest Nas 100 Nasdaq holdings. And so Nasdaq again is 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 mostly tech based companies, and um, that's you know just what it is. The Dow Jones Industrials are uh, like 30 of the largest industrial-based companies. And then you have the Russell, which is a uh, what they call a, um, a small cap index. And capitalization is nothing but the number of shares outstanding for a company times the current price. So um, I think small caps may be under 300 million I have to look at that definition, but it's, it's, it's not your really, really big, big companies. So um, with that, so this is this is a daily chart here. So let's just go back so you can see here. This is February 16th. We started with a down day. Uh, again, tech heavy focused in NASDAQ. Then we had another down day, then another down day, then another down day, another down day. So uh, what's the day? So this is Friday, yesterday. So Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. So here, so this is a Monday or Tuesday, right? But you can see all these red candles down. So we lost um, just from a, a pure market perspective. So this was the low yesterday. So we were down. Let's see what this is. Do that again. Just trying to get a perspective of how big the drop was. Okay, so we're literally down 12%, right? And these are just the, just the overall general market you're talking. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So of these 14 days, you got what? 10 of the days down. And then even in these three green days here, they all were taken out by this red bar and this red bar, meaning that, let me draw a picture here, meaning that even though you had you had areas where this tried to have some, some rebound in the green, they were still taken out by these further three green bars here. So it was, it was almost like it didn't happen because it couldn't sustain, so we, we, we just kept going down, right? So if you just count that as one big day, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, count all that as seven, you know, well, these two are seven, then you got eight. So you, you basically straight down is really the point I'm trying to illustrate. And this was, this was brutal. So even though that represented like a 12% pullback for certain stocks that you were in, so let's take a look at, um, just a stock particularly and, and see um, just as a, so let's just look at Apple and we'll take a look at them. So that was February 16th. So here's the 16th in Apple. So you're talking from 135 down to 117, right? Let's look at Autodesk. Autodesk is a, a major CAD software company. So you're talking from 316 down to 150, 255. So that's a pretty, pretty big move. So you're saying it's a 19% drop, right? Uh, let's see. 
give me, give me, give me any any company you all following, and we'll just look at it. Just call out some tickers. Anybody? Can I ask a question real quick before you do that? Uh, you broke up on me, Sharif. Say it again. Can you ask a question before you walk? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when you see the market or you see a stock that has these big dips down, do you see that as an opportunity to buy more of that stock? Or do you see it as a, a red flag that you need to be trying to move away from that stuff? Good question. Uh, depends on what your thesis is on it. So give me, give me a, give me a ticker, and we can we can look at one. As well, Apple as, was one. Okay, so like, I, all right. So let's let's go back to Apple. All right. So just to repeat on that question, if everybody didn't hear him, say hey, if you're in a stock and it drops and it pulls back. Uh, you know, should you be buying on the pullback or should you be selling in order to protect your gains? So really that great question. I think it has to do, the answer to that has to do with what what is your thesis on the stock? Is this a trade for you or is this a long-term holding? And and so if it's a trade, if it's a trade, then you may, well, so let me, let me just break that down. If it's a trade, or if you're in the trade and you're just trying to protect maybe some gains that you have, or you want to limit your losses, then you may want to cut your losses, but it really depends upon your entry. Where are you? So if you're in at 144, in this case, and Apple has pulled back to 118, yeah, you probably wanted to have been a seller up in these areas if your entry is in the, anywhere in the 140s, right? Because that's a pretty, you know, decent uh pullback in apple so let's see what that percentage is so you're talking you know an 18 percent pullback and an 18 percent pullback in apple is is significant right so it but again if you were if you were in up in these areas in this uh if your entries was anywhere in this one say 140 area yeah, you probably wanted to be taking some profit there so um now let's say you're in you're in there and your entry is there and you, you didn't even have any profits you you entered here and you just wanted to limit your losses you know that could also be an area you wanted to get out now <clears throat> over to the the trade well so that's if you already had the stock if you didn't have the stock and you was monitoring it so you can see here it broke a level support here at 134. It came down to this 126. It tried to bounce a couple of days ago, but it couldn't hold it. And it broke down through that. So it's, you, so you're kind of in the middle between this 126 and this 113. So you could say, you know, hey, it broke this level of support here. It broke that level and it broke this level. Now you may say, you know what? If this gets down close to this 113, you know what? I like Apple. I might want to start trying to build a position. And if you are building a position anywhere around in this area, to me, that seems to be, you know, a, a good entry given where we've come from, right? Now, but but even in that, that's, that's taking an, an assumption that the overall market is going to bounce. Because again, the previous chart that I just showed we, we saw from the broader market that this whole area, uh, this whole area here from this, what's that particularly, not even there, really from here, because this represents the 16th, right? So on that previous chart I, I, drew, I drew, this just represents the, the, the overall NASDAQ market just pulling back. So, and, and, and so let me, let me go back to that because I want to make a point. If, if the stock that you're in, if the broader market is down and it's correlated to the, to the broader market, in this case, tech, if you got a tech stock, I can pretty much guarantee probably with a 75% you know, correlation that your stock is down over the last two weeks. So if you go back two weeks and you got a tech stock, I can more than likely for the 75% of the tech stocks that you own, 
they're probably going to be down. You may have a few outliers that are up, but for the most part, they're down. Uh, you know, so again, so that's that's that. And, and, and the reason why I bring that up is that sometimes you can't fight the overall broader market trend. If the broader market is going down in a particular sector that you're in, then uh, stocks usually are going to be going down in, in, in conjunction with it no matter how good the company is. And, and so you, I don't know if you all have ever heard this term is, is, that they say in the market, the trend is your friend is, is one. So here the trend is down. So in this case, if you're trading with the trend, it's your friend. If you're trying to trade against the trend, then you, you know, you're getting hurt. Or the other, the other saying is, you know, rising tide lift all boats, you know, and or in and the corollary of that is if if this, if the uh, if the boat is sinking or or if the water and the, the ocean is is violent, then you know the, the boats are going to have trouble navigating, right? So again, this is um, so if you were if you were in at at higher level Sharif and you're an inv- and you're trading it, yeah, then you would want to take profits. If you're an investor. Or you're, or you don't, or you're a trader, and you didn't have a previous position, and you're saying, "Hey, let me look at, you know, possibly um, seeing where I can enter a position into Apple." If that's the case, then at these levels, you want to start looking at to say, "Hey, this could be a, a good buying decision." So if we go back, we're on a, a daily there. If we go back to a weekly chart, you can see here that. So back in, what is this, July of 2020, August of 2020. So you can see that this 104 to 107, we were in this range on a pullback, right? But once we broke out from this 107 here, we came back up, hit that 113, and then it's just been off to the races all the way up until, you know, the beginning of this year. And now we're getting a pullback. So if you get to this level, I think this is a, you know, you can start nibbling here if you want to enter a position. If the market continues to pull back, then you want to look at this 113 maybe as a more aggressive point. But if it gets to 107, you want to be a buyer there if this is a stock that you like, because you just have history here to your left that's showing you these are previous price points that people have gotten in. Now, uh, another thing, even on this chart, you want to look at as well. Again, this is a weekly. Um, you, can, you want to start paying attention to volume too. So you can see here, look at these two volume areas. We got pretty decent volume right here compared to what it has been the previous two weeks. So this is the previous two weeks here. You didn't have that same level of volume until you went back to this, this first big pullback here. So that was a big volume uh, pullback. Uh, for the week of January 21st. And then we've matched it these last two weeks, right? Almost matched it. So volume, and, and what volume just means is the number of people that are making trades in that in that particular area or, or over that time frame. So now if I go back to a daily, and you can see, again, this is on the 16th, you can see volume is actually rising, right? Is rising because this is daily uh, here and you can see the volume picking up versus kind of where we so if you look at this in context so if you take um, well let me stop there so did I did I answer your question Sharif yeah makes total sense to me okay all right any any other questions before I continue Okay, and just stop me, guys, because sometimes I can just get going. Um, so, but I was going to say, from a volume perspective, if you just look and see how this is trending, you can see this volume is trending higher, right, to there, and then it broke down again, and then it trended, ah, trend, it's trended up again there, right? So you got volume pieces there. Uh, any other, any other stocks we want to look at? Um, just to kind of, again, illustrate, you know, what has happened in the last two weeks and, and identify if the particular stock is in the tech area. Because we'll look at a couple that are not tech and, and they may have some different uh, 
the chart may appear different. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Any other ideas? Any other tickers? What are y'all holding? Give me some, tell me, give me a stock that y'all are holding. I don't want to be the only one speaking up, but I also have Microsoft. And... Okay. Microsoft. So Microsoft Tech, go back to the 16th, same same thing, it's dropping. So, uh, Ken, I know you. All right, so let's look at a at a, at a opposite example. Let's look at a, I know Ken owns um, AT and T. All right, let's go to February 16th, right here. So. This uh, this had a pullback to here to March 1st, but look, since March 1st, so actually the last, this last week, whereas the NASDAQ was getting killed this week, look at what happened to, um, to AT&T. It's, it's, it's five straight days up. That, that, that's the opposite of what we were seeing with, with Apple and Microsoft, right? And this is a this is a decent size move too. So we go from from bottom to top. We're talking six percent up. So six percent up versus uh, I think we saw seventeen or eighteen percent down on the other side. You know, you're talking a twenty what uh, a a twenty three percent difference. You know, so that so again, this is this is not a not a necessarily a tech play. And one of the things is particularly with AT&T, AT&T pays a pretty good dividend. So this could have been a flight to safety that people use um, AT&T as an income generating uh, stock, meaning that if they have a lot of money in the AT&T stock, AT&T pays, I believe a quarterly dividend. So you can see here D at the bottom of this chart. So yeah, so they pay a quarterly dividend. So it's first dividend in January, the last one was in October. So they pay it every three months. So if you're getting a dividend on this, then there may have been a, a flight to safety because a dividend paying stock can put a, a floor to the bottom of, of where stock goes. So let's let's shrink this down. So if we're just looking at you know our support levels. So this 27 level, Previous support. I can actually draw this line here for um, for another level support at 26. So you say 26, 27, 28. Now this stock doesn't trade. It's not as volatile, uh, but you can definitely see what we highlighted here is that much different in terms. So. There's been a rotation out of tech into financials, into um, some of the 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 what they call kind of uh, back to normal, meaning like uh, coronavirus plays or, or vac vaccine plays is probably a better way to say it. In terms of if we get back to normal, you know, uh, things are not locked down so much. Which companies stand a, a better chance of, of 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 doing better? So. There's been some rotation in that. So look at banks, you know, and financials recently. So there's a rotation out of it. So I mean, out of uh, out of tech. So let's look at uh, uh, Bank of America, BAC. So again, we're gonna go back to our our February 16th. All right. So here, so this chart looks much different as opposed to having. I think on that other chart we had four four down days. On this chart from the 16th to where we are now, we have what only three down days, four down days, as opposed to you know what instead of uh, 11 up days, right? If you're just saying two weeks or a little bit better than two weeks, so this is definitely a different trend. So if you were in financials, doing well, uh, let's go to one of Kyle's favorites, um, Carnival Cruise Line, right? Since the 16th. 
nothing but up. 21 to up to 49. Now we did get a pullback, a big pullback uh, Thursday and yesterday. And yesterday was brutal in, in the market. We had a huge pullback and then a bounce. Um, and so you see this this long wick. And what this long wick represents is it started. So this is the open, the top, the bottom is the close. Open meaning this is what it opened at at 930. And then it closed at four, four o'clock yesterday. But this this long wick on this bar uh, represents the low of the day. So it's just saying with the lows of the day. So it as stock got as low as 23 and it rebounded back up to 26. So if we go into a 15 minute chart, we can see what yesterday looked like for that stock. So we opened at uh, 9.30. You can see here from 9.30 to 11.15, we pretty much were straight down. From 11 fit, from 11.30 on up to say 12.30, you got a good little rebound there. And then you just kind of went sideways sideways down back up a little bit so there was definite so this wick represents that bottom so like from here because we end up closing right here right so anything under this closing bar will represent that same wick it's just it's, it's the same data it's just broken down showing the 15 minute increments versus what the bar would look like if it was all aggregated together okay um, so you got other, so let me think of another. So give me, give me some more of your stocks. Um, somebody else, somebody speak up. Um, we talked about Apple. Um, I guess, uh, PepsiCo. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. Now is PepsiCo a tech stock? No, it's not. Okay. So if it wasn't tech, let's see what it does, what it did in comparison. <laughs> they traded it like it was a tech. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, they beat this thing up. All right, so here's going back to February 16th, right here, this green bar. And they traded this, it was just like this was a tech stock. I don't know why, because PepsiCo is in, in the beverage and food uh, space. But this, they traded it like tech. So this, I would have, I would have thought it would have been more like one of the other plays as a non-tech play, but they they killed this. So you're talking, you know, this pullback again from was the 16th. Uh, 16th is here, yeah. So pullback from here down to the bottoms. You're talking five percent. Eh, that's not too bad. It looked worse, but five percent is not bad. Let me, let me pull it out. Okay, yeah, so that's only from one, you're talking actually from 135 down to 130. Even though it looked brutal, that really wasn't that bad because it was only a 5% move. Again, versus on the other side, we was talking like a 17, 18% move to the downside. So relatively speaking, if you were holding this since the 16th, you didn't lose as much of your value as as you would if you were holding one of the other ones. But then look at yesterday. Yesterday was a, a big move up. So if you just look at yesterday's move on that five percent down, you made you know almost three percent of it back yesterday alone. So net net, you're only down two percent, which again pales in comparison to the eighteen percent down that we were showing before. So, so the reason why I'm, you know, spending a, a, a good bit of time going on this is that, you know, you have to look at what the broader market is doing because it can affect the individual stocks. So if you're looking up, looking at your portfolio daily, you're like, man, my account just keep dropping, my account keeps dropping. What's going on? And you can narrow in and look at your individual stock, but the it may have nothing to do with your individual stock. It may have something to do with the broader market. So Apple hadn't stopped selling, uh, uh, you know, the amount of iPhones in the last two weeks, you know, overall. So this has nothing to do with the performance of the company in terms of their sales and stuff particularly, but this has more to do with the broader market sell-off. So. 
Um, any, any, any comments, questions? So I, I need you all to give me some feedback here, just in terms of, you know, what are you all thinking? You know, what your portfolios have done. Uh, you know, let's let's have some interactive dialogue here. I have a question. I don't know. I may be going way out in the weeds. So if I am, just say, okay, that's not relevant. But I was reading some articles and they were talking about quadruple, quadruple witching and its effect with the institutions. It's why the market is taking this dive right now. Is that relevant? Yeah, it, it can be. But yeah, but quadruple witching. So what what that means is, is that there are options. So you have options, right? Op all options and futures have expirations, meaning that they have a time that they expire and they they fall on days so when you have a a monthly uh uh so options trade in 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 dates so you have weekly options you have monthly options and then you have quarterly options and then i think you even have yearly options right and quadruple quad being four is when that date can represent all of those expiring at the same time so the quadruple witching of what we had was probably in January, right? And so where you had the monthlies, the dailies, the weeklies, and the yearlies all hit. And that can have an effect on price. But I think if, so if we go back and, so yes, I think that can have an effect, Sharif. But I, I believe overall, probably what the larger narrative was, is, is just that we've been on an incredible run. So if you just look at NASDAQ, so let's go out to a monthly on the NASDAQ, right? There's a NASDAQ chart on a monthly. So you gotta go back to, I mean, really you can say from, and this is pandemic lows right here. All right, so let me just draw that. This pandemic low, last March, right there. So from March, we effectively just been straight up Right. So in the context of a of a yearly upswing, we've done nothing but made money. So this pullback is actually healthy and and it's it has been brutal. So you could, you know, have lost, you know, money this, you know, in the past couple of weeks. But this is a healthy pullback because this run has just been unprecedented. You know, so you're talking. So let's just look at the percentage of this run. All right, from the pandemic low to where we were at the height of this, right? So you're talking 108% up, right? That's huge. You know, there, I mean, if you can make 12% in a year, that's that's a good percent, percentage to make. If you can do that, you know, over 10 year period. If, and, and it's really hard to make 12% a year over 10 years, right? That's hard to do, that's not easy. But we did 100% in a year. So a pullback of, you know, so you, so in relative terms, it's 108%. We did a pullback to here. So you're still up 83%. That's, that's still a good move, right? If you just take the last two weeks out of this, you know, and actually right here. So, you, so 91%, right? Because we actually closed here. We didn't close down at the bottom here. So that's a, that's a, that's a good move. Um, so I think it had more to do with just a healthy pullback than the triple witching in isolation. That, that would be my, uh, that would be my, uh, uh, assessment. And then overall, let's go to the Dow. So the Dow is another, so these are three major indexes. You got the Dow. Uh, I don't have that. So the, the NQ represents the NASDAQ. This is the straight Dow. Um, and then, you, so let me just, so you have the Dow, you have the NASDAQ, and then you have the S&P 500. So if I do S&P 500, so let me do the SPX. So S&P 500, and then, um, so this is 500, 500 largest companies on the S&P index. So these indexes, it's just like, you know, so is what, I don't know, 10 of us in this group, if we wanted to create an index and just call it the stock group index, it's really just the, a representative of a company creating this thing with some, some kind of criteria and say, we're gonna evaluate these companies and allow them to get into our index. And that's really all the S&P 500 is, the, 
the standard stands for Standard and Poor's 500 index, and they pick which companies get uh, included in this index. Right? The Dow Jones is the 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 industrials, 30 top industrials uh, uh, companies, and then the the Russell, uh, and then the Nasdaq is the top. 100 nasdaq based companies right and these are just indexes to be able to track so when they say the market they're always going to be talking about the dow the nasdaq and the uh the s p and and sometimes they'll throw the russell in there as well but those four indices represent the broader market and they and they slice out different things again dow is industrials nasdaq is tech russell is small caps and, and probably the, the the one that gets the most play is the S&P 500, which which I just had up. So SPY or SPX, either, either one. Uh, so SPY is a is a ETF and XPX is the actual um, the, the thing that they use, but they both represent the same stuff, right? And so by and large, when people say, hey, how am I doing in comparison to the market? You can just think of the S&P 500 as that benchmark that is that you're grading against, right? And so, but with these indexes, they you're just tracking you're, you're tracking your performance against these. And so, if you're doing as good as the index, then you know you, you should be you should be in line. So the goal is to be do as good as the index and, and do no worse than the index. But in this in this pullback that we had here in the NASDAQ, it, it's just been brutal again these last two weeks, right? As, as we discussed here. Let me pull this back down. So it's, it's just been brutal, but it didn't happen in the Dow. We got, you know, so you say since February 16th. So we went up some, we came down some, but we're pretty much back to even. If you look here, that's yesterday and this is February 16th. So we're literally even, we're, you know, within a few, a few points of where the Dow closed at on the 16th versus where it is today. So if you, and so what happened was there was a rotation out of tech into the Dow. Uh, and again, they, they sold off the NASDAQ stocks and went into, and in a lot of cases, they say it went into value. So look at, let's look at Boeing, right? Boeing is an industrial, right? They make airplanes, right? February 16th, where were we? Here on the 16th, we're at 216. And even with the, the pullback of the last two days, they're still higher, right? So they're they're classified, they're they're not they're not looked at as tech. So probably let's say Netflix. Netflix is definitely tech, right? There's Netflix, yeah, NFLX. All right, let's go to Feb 16th. Where were we? Okay, right here. Feb 16th. 557 and where we are 516 so we had a, had a pull back here so that's in line with what nasdaq was doing and netflix just kind of followed what nasdaq did uh let's look at oil mro this is a this is an oil stock let's go to feb 16th all right oh and this is a coronavirus play virus play meaning that as people go back to work they're going to have to drive so they got to drive it quick, got to put oil in the car, put gas in the car, All right? So this thing is run. So in comparison, so there's a shift back into returning back to work. That's where a lot of things have come in. But look at this, this is a cheap stock. So some of these previous companies that were beat up during the pandemic, there's a lot of rotation now out of these big tech names that have run really well for the past year and rotation into some of these other things. So banks or financials larger, let's look at MetLife. Let's see how they've done. It's an insurance company, right? Let's see, again, rotation. Um, so I think I beat that up pretty, pretty well, but uh, I just wanted to cover that to just say, hey, 
depending upon what you're holding. And 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 so if you like I have a Nasdaq heavy portfolio myself. And so I'm too concentrated in one area. I could stand to use more broader plays that are non-tech to where this these last two weeks wouldn't have hurt me as much. Um, so I, I know I can do that personally. Um, so, so that's kind of like just the, the, the broader market, uh, um, discussion. Any, any other points, suggestions, questions, um, anything else we want to talk with there? So I'm going to start calling on people here. Hold on. Let me get back to my list. I don't want to ask. I'll ask another question. (laughs) Yes, sir. So this, I guess is personal, but like when you're building your portfolio, Mine, personally, I'm very tech heavy as well. But like when I see that, I'm trying to build positions in those companies. So how do you like branch out into building or I guess diversifying your portfolio and still build those positions to try to grow your portfolio? Um, so it's so it depends upon what you believe about diversification, right? So if I were more diversified, and had say that let's just say say I had MetLife and I just showed the previous chart of Boeing. Say I had that in swapped out for maybe a couple of the tech stocks that I've owned, then my portfolio just wouldn't been been down as much in this particular instance of what has happened in the last two weeks, right? Where they sold Nasdaq and they bought you know say the Dow or or non Nasdaq based companies, so my portfolio would be uh, much better, but. Had I held these, you know, so if you go back and take a larger look, you know, uh, so actually this is, you know, so this company has done well, you know, through the pandemic, right? Uh, Off the pandemic low here in March of last year to 59. So you're talking 22 to 60, that's a a triple. So this company has done well and really hadn't had much of a pullback. But, but, but by the same token, prior to the pandemic, you're only talking about if you held this for the pandemic and you never sold, you're only up six bucks, right? You're only up six bucks. That's, that's brutal. Versus if you compare that, say with Apple pandemic, pan pre pandemic, pandemic. So you're talking, you offer of $80 to 144 or even where we are today to 120, right? That's a big difference. So had I had those from a diversification standpoint in my account, yes, I would have been more diversified, but I would have left a lot of money on the table if I was concentrated and if I had more of a diverse portfolio. Now, this is just where risk tolerance come in. So, and, and one thing about the about what your personal ethos is around your your makeup. So let's so I'm a more risky person as it relates to I'm, so I'm in tech. I, I, my, my profession is tech, right? So I'm more tech focused because I believe in it. it you know, it's a, a growth driver, and I don't have as many non tech companies in, in my portfolio. I have a few, but but not a whole lot. Um. But that fits well with just what I'm interested in and what my what my risk tolerance is for. Whereas someone else that may not be as risk tolerant, they say, well, hey, I'll have a couple. I'll have a Microsoft. I'll have a Netflix. But I also want to have a Boeing. I want to have a, a, a PepsiCo. I want to have a, a Marathon Oil. And, and they may be happy with that mix because that mix fits well with more of their conservative view. So you really have to ask yourself, what type of risk appetite do I have? Am I very risky or am I less risk? And then I think you would do well to match that with what your tolerance is because you want to be able to sleep at night. You don't want to be able to you know, have to worry about this stuff. So if you took a, you know, a 20% pullback in the last two weeks, is that going to allow you to sleep or are you going to be tripping? You know, so that to me, those are the types of questions that you have to ask yourself to say, hey, let me align my portfolio with my uh, kind of with my mentality, with my sentiment and and, and go from there. Does, does that answer? Oh, yes, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. 
Any other questions? Hey, Mike. Uh, yes. How you doing? Hi, how are you? Okay. Um, <clears throat> first of all, let me apologize because I just, I'm a very busy person. I work, I, I work a lot of jobs, so. No, we good. Get, get your hustle on, Angela. We ain't mad at you. <laughs> um, I have a very diversified uh, uh, portfolio. And okay. when I started seeing things, uh, when I saw that fallen knife, uh, I, I didn't do anything. I just kind of let it fall because I, my, I took a, I think I lost about $400, but I look at it as a paper loss. And um, I have, uh, I was looking at uh, electrical vehicles mm -hmm. and I was trying, I was trying to see what electrical vehicle could I get into. So uh, I got into one, it's called, um, hold on, I got to go to it. Mm, excuse me. Um, Google has it. Um, it's called G G G G G. What is it called? It's G O O G. Yeah, that's Google. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and um, I, I only do I only bought a portion of it. I only mm -hmm. bought a portion of it, mm -hmm. and um, it's doing okay. It's doing okay. But I wanted to get into more electrical vehicles because um. I think that's the direction that the, the vehicle world is going into. <laughs> They're less expensive to maintain than a gas powered car. So what do you think about, uh, what, are, what are your, and keeping in mind that I may have missed you mentioned something about it cause I had to get off for a minute, but yeah. What yeah, yeah, I haven't, yeah, we really haven't talked about EVs, but so yeah, let me, let me address a couple of questions you said there. So. Kind of going to your your paper loss thing. So you say so you started. So you have a you have a diversified you know mm -hmm. uh, portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. Spell. Okay, yeah. So you got a diversified portfolio, and you just have paper losses there, right? Now, mm -hmm. what? It, and so this is for the for the broader group as well. Um, Angela says she's not worried about the pullback because her portfolio is diversified across some sectors. And the, the only question I would ask you, Angela, in that, are you regularly adding money to your portfolio? Yes. Okay. And, and to me, that's, that's key. So in terms of the, the market pullback, paper losses, you know, so what she basically says, I'm not worried. All right. But also here is what she said is that I'm, I'm regularly investing, right? So I'm adding, I'm adding new money over time. And these, these, so these dips, and so let's let's look back at, uh, let's look at something. You know, what? I'll just go back to the Nasdaq, right? So, so if if Angela, let's just say, and you don't have to divulge this, I'll just kind of extrapolate a little bit. Let's say Angela is investing weekly, right? So if she invested last week, maybe she started there, right? Five days later is another entry into her investment. Five days later is another entry into her investment, right? So she's just buying on the way down. So she's just adding and taking advantage of this dip. Therefore, it helps her where she's getting better prices because she's adding to her portfolio. And and, and, and all that is, is, is you'll hear people talk about a term called dollar cost averaging. That's all she's doing. Just, you know, and dollar cost averaging means is that every time you buy, if it's, if it's lower, you're going to buy more shares. If it's higher, you're going to buy less shares. But overall, you're going to get the best price over time. And so that the idea of the paper losses, meaning that she hadn't so not worried about those losses. She's investing regularly. She's going to get the, the better average price over time. And then her portfolio is diversified. So where she may be down on some of her NASDAQ holdings, if she has some Dow holdings, then she's probably going to be close to even. And if she has anything in a Russell, eh, she might still be down just a little bit. But it, it so it, it's not going to hurt her that much, right? And then if she has, you know, so let's take a I'm trying to think of another. What's uh what's uh Norwegian or yes, yeah, is it? Is it I have CCL. I have, De I have Delta. As okay, yeah. Let's look at Delta. Yeah, that's a good one. Was DAL, right? So let's look at Delta. So she got Delta, right? You know, let's go, let's go back. We're starting with the 16th. All right, here. So 
So, you know, she's she's doing well on this downturn. Only a pullback yesterday and Friday. I mean, Friday and Thursday. But this is a good move. So you just track this in comparison. So this can offset some of those tech losses if she had some tech stuff that she was holding, right? So it's 17% up. And if you come back down here, it's still 8% up versus, you know, the NASDAQ, if I go here back to the NASDAQ, as opposed to this, what is this, 19 down? What is that? Well, we closed yesterday here. So eight down versus, you know, and we were down 12. So that can even it out. So so for others, and, and, and Sharif, this kind of addresses a little bit of, of what you were asking a question in terms of diversification. So by her being diversified, down some in NASDAQ related uh, stocks, up in, you know, uh, virus plays and and um, just regular uh, other companies that are outside the NASDAQ space. So those are pieces there. So so thanks for sharing that, Angela. That was good. Yeah, okay. And also, um, I have some dividend uh, plays that I've been okay. building up. Like I have Maine uh, Financial. I have... Um, What's that ticker? Which, uh, oh, let me give it to you. Um, bear with me. It's M-A-I-N. M-A-I-N. Okay. Man. And, okay. Mm, and I have Capital Southwest, okay. but I'll, I'll just stick with. I'll, okay. You know. Capital. What's, what's Capital Southwest? I haven't heard of that one. Okay, before. hold on. Um, so that's at C S W C. Okay. And uh, one more dividend. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, hold on. Uh, hold on. I'll get to you yeah, and, and as as she's pulling that up, I'm gonna show you all something here in your watch list. So if I encourage each of you all to set up a trading view account, and so you can see here in my watch list on the left, you can have different categories here. So I have indexes, I got crypto, and then I got stocks. But you can either break those down because these are just labels, right? So if I wanted to add another uh, section, so let's just say I add a section, I can go here. I'm gonna move it actually. Let's move up here and I'm saying I'm gonna rename the section. So just as Angela's is talking about her dividend stuff. I can spell right. Yeah. Dividend. So then I can say, let me add a symbol there. So for instance, I know that uh ATT has a dividend stuff. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. I know ATT has a dividend. I'm trying to find one I didn't have in my in my, in my you got S you have S P H D? Because I have that too. SPHD. Okay. All right. That looks like that's a, a ETF, right? So what you can do is you can use these these labels to organize your your stuff in your portfolio. So I can start putting dividend stuff in here. I got I got a. Uh, I can move this up. Go back down to my T-Mobile. So I know T-Mobile, not T-Mobile. Trying to say AT and T. I'm saying T-Mobile. I had it in there. I must have moved it. But yeah, so I could add, I can add um, that that T Mobile, you know, I keep saying T Mobile, that AT and T up under the dividend there, right? So I can organize these, um, and so this is a way that you can, you know, get to stuff because like I have all these stocks in here, and it takes me a while to find them. I probably would do good in organizing these a little bit better as well. But uh, just just a pointer there. Um, and you know what? Let me add another one that she just talked about. Yeah, another symbol, another section. And again, you all can reorganize your stuff here. So we just say uh, vehicles. All right. So David asked me a question earlier today, and I didn't get back to him. So I'll use this as an opportunity to. So give me some EV names, guys, um, and we'll just load this up. Um, everybody don't answer at once. You talking about like, okay, electric vehicles. I only have... Oh, right. Neo. Yeah. R-I-B-E. All right. All right. Okay, Neo, ride. That's the one I'm trying to check out. I was, I'm thinking, I should have bought it one of 15, man. Of course, Tesla. I got Neo at six when it first came out. Tesla. Okay. Uh, I think there's a Chinese one, EH. Uh, yeah, 
I think this is ethanol fuse. Eli, no, Elang. I think it's Elang here. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's E H L I. Uh, yeah, I think this one's L I here. Um, I think it's uh, E E V A P or E X A P. And my buddy told me about one. I can't I can't remember it. Oh, it's E V P. I can't remember. It's a, it's a bunch of them. I have to search for some more. But but we can just go with these 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 first few, right? So Tesla get killed, right? So you go back to the 16th. It already started, you know, rolling over from the from the eighth. But we just go back to 16th, just with our overall thesis that we we're talking about. Nasdaq getting killed, right? But a big bounce yesterday off of. 438. So now this is where your support and resistance come in. We haven't really talked much about that today. But you know, it's the bedrock of, of, of trying to find out where where you can get some value. So there's so you know, broke down through broke down through the 831, broke down through the 805, broke down through 781, uh, down here to the 647, got as low as 541. And if it get back to this 502 area, that's definitely a buy, but it may not because this is a huge bottom tail. Again, we talked about that a bit earlier. And this might be a decent area because you got some congestion right here. And, you know, that's an area. But this has been a huge, this has been, a, if you're holding Tesla and you're, you bought anywhere up here, you're in this 30% pullback, almost eh, probably 27, anywhere between 25, 27. Let's measure it. It's a 39% pullback to the low and a 32% pullback from top to where we are today. 32%. So if you're so if you had ten dollars in there, you got six now. Or, or or you know, seven, should I say. So that's, that's a huge pullback. Um, let's look at Neil. Same thing. 60 down to 38, right? Oh shucks, that's it's almost it's closer to a 50% pullback here. This is, this is even this is even more. Um, so here, that's 50, right? So you were down 50, now you're down 41. That's a big, it's a big pullback. Uh, workhorse, workhorse lost that. Uh, matter of fact, they got crushed right here. This must have been the day when the U.S. Postal Service said that they didn't win that contract. They got beat to sleep. That's just that one, and that was. That was in the midst of this pullback from the 16th, and they had already started to roll over on the on the 10th, right? Now, if you think that, so again, look at the support and resistance. If you think that this prior this prior move here, you know, so effectively this is a triple, it's a triple bottom. If you think that this is an area that you want to start nibbling, it may make sense there. Now, if they get if they, so I remember that I think they were going back to Congress or somebody disputing that other company winning that contract away from them. I forget which company it was that won it, where they were anticipating Workhorse was gonna win it. I think they were going back uh, talking about the, the criteria in which it was awarded. And if, if they get a change on that and that gets reversed somehow or they get a piece of that contract, you might see a pop. I don't know what the catalyst is for workhorse without that contract. Cause then are you then just, you know, in waiting for just consumer uh, um, interest into the EV space. So don't know, but just from a chart perspective, Hey, you can shake a few at it here, probably put you a stop under 11, 1180 and see what happened. And, and, and look at this volume down here. Volume was huge on this drop based on that news. And, and I just happen to be following, I read the news on that one. That's the only thing I know about that one. Uh, ride, another another one. All these are tech, you know, electric, electric vehicles are nothing but tech. They're getting killed, right? But again, looking at your chart, you can start nibbling at 18. You got as low as 14 yesterday, right? If you, just, if, if you were astute enough to buy here in this drop, you know, you could have made two points. You could have made two and a half dollars yesterday a share. 
if you were quick on the train trigger and you have been following but kind of it looks like that workhorse chart you got uh previous support here previous support here so it's 13 area definitely a good support area but i don't know enough about the long-term thesis of, of, of lorestown motors versus uh workhorse versus neil um some people are are, are big time tesla bulls this might be a this might be a, a, a entry point you got to remember tesla did a what a four for one back in august uh I think it, yeah i think it was august what was that what was it november and eh, probably no i think that four for one yeah i think the four for one came out here sometime in august and uh so yeah hold on one second for me guys Y'all can just talk a second. I gotta take this call real quick. All right, guys, sorry with that. Um, Y'all want, want nobody talking. We gonna, hey, this, this is not a this is not a lecture, y'all. We're gonna have to have some interactive dialogue. I want y'all to be, you know, talking about what y'all doing amidst each other, you know? <laughs> so y'all sitting there, y'all as quiet as church mouse. Um, but yeah, so, so, you know, so this is what I see in an electric vehicle. There, is much broader than this. There are many other companies in it. And then there, there are plays as well on electric vehicle. You know, the, the battery plays, there's a bunch of a bunch of battery plays that have done well recently, but they're probably all getting killed too with NASDAQ in general. But, uh, but yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that. Angela, any, any other uh, thing in electric vehicle space that you want to talk about specifically? No, um, I just think they're going to come back. And like I said, I, I just wanted to know what you thought about it. And yeah, also I, the dividend, the dividend plays that I'm doing as well. Yeah. Th those, you know, let me add those dividend plays. In, Cause I, I'm not familiar with those, but, and so let's, let's talk about that a bit. So let's just say here, we'll, we'll just use this as an example. Huh? We know we'll use actual an actual uh, dividend play. Let me remove this. Cause I don't know how much, uh, others on the dividend plays kind of I mean I think we know what they are generally but we'll talk a little bit so let's say for instance let's say you buy you buy next week you can get this uh, this T-Mobile and we'll just use 29 just say 2960 as our entry price right say you buy this right and let's see what that so we see here uh, go down to the dividend so it was a dividend of 52 cent right so let's assume that this dividend is going to stay constant and they're going to pay this dividend out that was in January. So they're going to pay this dividend out again in April at 50 at 52 cents. So let me do this. All right. So we end at 29.62, right? So we got that. We, we buy it at this price. And then comes April, right? You get a 20, you get a 52 cent dividend, right? What that effectively does, okay, and, and you and you reinvest. Do you reinvest your dividends? Uh, um, yes, I have them Angela. set up so that when the dividends come in, they just basically reinvest. And reinvest, what, what, what does that mean specifically? 
that it just goes back into uh, the money to help, like to buy a full share. And that's what I'm trying to do is, uh, well, okay. With Maine, how many I have, let me just take a quick look and see how, how many I have. I'll, I'll bring it up. Because, because it has grown. Because it has grown. Is it Main Street Capital Corp? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, so okay. when I first when I first got it, uh, um, it was at thirty one eighty five, okay. and I have I have three shares of Maine on this one. And um, let me see, Capital Southwest. Let me see. Okay, when I first got Capital Southwest, it was at eighteen dollars and fourteen cent. I had five shares. I got them at twenty one dollars and fifty nine cent. And um, my I was listening to uh, I think what's his name? What's that guy's name? Warren Buffett. He gets paid like checks of over seven thousand dollars of dividends that he. You know, he, he gets checks like that. So I said, well, that, you know, I would like to do that too. So like, I just got a dividend. I just got a dividend of um, three cent. Now three cent is nothing. And I realized that I got a, it was from Parker Hanavan. And uh, I had, uh, I had a small little percentage of it. And the first time I got a dividend from them, it was like one cent. So I added to the position a little bit and it went up. Um, Everything that I have, I'm trying to build it up so that my dividend payouts will be uh, bigger. In the meantime, when I get paid a dividend, it just goes back into the into the um, stock okay. to add to it so that my dividends will grow. Right. Very good. Thanks. Thank you, Angela. And, and, and she really hit it, hit it all there, guys. So she gets the dividend payout. So in this case, going back to that, uh, what was that? It was on a T-Mobile. So if you buy it twenty nine sixty two, you get a you get a, a dividend of, of fifty two cent. And and dividends normally they're going to be paid out in cash. But if you elect to reinvest, what it will do is take that fifty two cent, and that's per share. So let's let's just say. Um, per share. So in this case, let's just say, I'm, I'm just keep the numbers easy. Let's say it's got a hundred shares, right? So 52 cents, so you get $552, just add two zeros to the end of that. I mean, I'm sorry, $52, add two, two zeros to it. So that $52, if it's reinvested, then that will give you the opportunity. They're gonna buy two more shares on your behalf, almost two more shares because it's a little bit less than 52, but almost two point shares, whatever that 52 is divided by what the current price is. So whatever the current price is at the time that they pay that that dividend, uh, they, so again, that's would be the $52. And so it would be 52 divided by, so whatever, let's just do the math real quick. So it'd be 52 over 29. Let's say that the, the stock didn't move. So they will buy another 1.75 shares for you, right? And add that to your account. So that's what the dividend will be. Another way to think about that is that you lower your cost basis. So if you bought here at a buy point of 29.62, each time you get a dividend, you just minus that amount. So you say minus 52 cents. So your new cost basis is 29.10 uh, for the first dividend. You get another dividend. Say it stays constant at 52 cents. Then that's uh, 25, what's that, 60, 25, 42, 25, 60, 48. Something like that, I'm bad on my math right here. But you see, you, you steady lowering your cost basis, meaning you're steady lowering your entry price on the stock as you get dividend if you're reinvesting. And, and after a while, if you hold this for years and years and years, and let's say the dividend gets outrageous, you might actually be getting the stock for free because you've lowered your cost basis that much. But what people do, so remember when I was talking about earlier in terms of T-Mobile and I said the dividend can help keep the stock up because some people use it as income. So let's say you're, let's say you're retired, right? Let's say you got a thousand shares of T-Mobile. 
right? Or let's just say you got 10,000 shares T-Mobile, right? You, you work well, you saved a lot, and you put it in T-Mobile. So you're saying every every uh, um, every three months, they're paying you $52, 52 cent a share. So you say 52 cent a share times $10,000. You know, you're getting a check every quarter for 5,200 bucks. And if you're a senior and you got your money in this, you know, that can take care of, of, of rent, you know, and a car payment. And you're not even touching your principal. So people treat dividends as income and revenue streams. This is this is this is huge, guys. And, and so and as you build up your positions, just as Angela is saying, she wants to build up her positions to a point where she can start receiving dividends. As she gets her share amount up, she can start receiving that income. And and at some point, you you may say, you know what? I don't want to reinvest my dividends anymore. I want to get that out because I'm on fixed income now, but I want to use this as effectively another job. So as opposed to them greeting at Walmart, they can, you know, stick their 10,000 shares in, in, in T-Mobile and get, you know, 10,000 a year and, you know, working for, I don't know, $10 an hour, 2,000 hours a year, you know, what's that, 20 grand? So, you know, they, they don't work half a year just by putting that money there and getting it in, in T-Mobile. And and Mike, some some dividends pay monthly. Um, yes. Yeah. So I have some that pay monthly. I think Apple. I think Apple might pay monthly. Apple Apple pay Apple pays a dividend there quarterly. But Apple okay. yeah Apple yes ma'am Apple pays a dividend. So if you go back to you all's chart and look you see here, Apple pays a twenty cent dividend which is nothing for their size of stock. Now, uh, it's one dividend stock I used to play with. I sold it, uh, but it's a um, AGNC, Alpha, Gregory, Nancy, Charlie um, is, is one here. They pay a monthly dividend. So 12 cent, 12 cent, 12 cent, 12 cent. So you see here, just, since the since December 30th, they've paid 36 cent over a $15 stock. So you look at that yield. So you say 30, 30 cent over 15, what was it 1590? So what? So, so they paid out, um, you know, 1.2. And, and if you say you multiply it, so it's effectively that'll be a buck 20 over, and that's not right. That's monthly, so that's a quarter. So you can get four more of those. So it's twelve. So say thirty-six. Yeah. So you get you get about a buck twenty a year. So you say a buck twenty over over one fifty. You're talking about eight percent dividend, seven point five percent dividend, right? That's huge. Yeah. That's 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 a, that's, a, that's a good dividend. But yeah, these dividend works. They they work. So thanks thanks for bringing it up, Angela. Good good. Good info, good info. Anybody else? Well, I'm here, let's, so let's, let's just go back. Since I'm on this chart, I don't have any, let me hide this, uh, let me hide this. So I got a new chart here. I don't have any markings on it. What, what should I do? What should be one of the first things I do on this chart? Draw your lines. Okay, all right, somebody. All right, we're going we're going we're going to draw this chart up and I'm not going to all I'm doing is drawing the lines. Y'all going to tell me where to put them. All right, somebody start and let's just go person to person. Give me a point. Somebody speak up. Um hold on. So what about 16.75? 1675. Okay. Next. That's no, that's good. Sharif, give me a line. Um, trying to see. Let's see. If we go down to like around 1530. Right, right 15, there, up a little bit. Yeah, around there. 
right? Ken, give me a line. Uh, I guess you can put one right there. Fifteen ninety. Fifteen ninety. Yeah. Fifteen ninety is right here. Right here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Angela, give me a line. Um. Yeah, I probably. I would probably say. So the the lower one would be what I would be supporting, who I would be wanting to maybe start buying at, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I, I wonder. Well, I'm looking at how far down it went. How about fifteen? Just fifteen dollars. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, somebody else, give me a line. Start over again, David. Give me a line. Or what are we looking for a line for? I mean, uh, support or resistance? Yeah. If it's going to be a resistance line, let's just do 14. I see a lot of activity down there. All right. All right. Sharif, give me another line. And that That's the line I would have went with. Uh, I don't know where else to go. You can put one in a 14.50 or there. Fourteen fifty. You'll go here, Ken. All right. Yes, I'm worried. Okay, Angela, give me another line. So now, usually when I buy something, I I hang on to it. Uh, but if I was thinking of it, something that I would keep short term, which that's not really what I do. But um, like nineteen. Uh, I don't know, 19, maybe even, yeah, maybe, maybe about 1930, something like that. I would like to see what it's looking at at that point. Um, David, give me another line. Was that like uh, around 12, 25, something like that? No, like 12, 75, my, my bad. Okay. All right, can you give me another line? Mm -hmm. Do one. <sighs> Guys, y'all making this way too hard. Just no, I was just trying to look at that. Yeah, right. just, just, just. So, well, let me. I'm gonna let y'all finish. I'm gonna let y'all finish. Then, then, we, then I'm gonna erase it. And then we gonna do it again. Put one at thirteen. Thir I'm sorry. At, at thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, thirteen. All right, Sharif, give me another line. I don't have a line. I'm waiting on the explanation because I don't understand half. Yeah, of I'd right be now. done right now. That's the line <laughs> I would ever draw. I, I was going to say most of these are all support uh, lines, and that's why I was thinking about um, the resistance line because the the ones that are lower, these are the entry points where people would consider buying this stock at, right? Mm -hmm. And then the the resistance. That's why I went up to uh, the 19 where somebody might think about selling it before it might pull back down again. Great, great point. Great point. So it's relative to where so so let's all right. So I'm gonna give a I'm gonna give an explanation. All you're looking for is 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 up points and down points. All right. So so I'm, I'm gonna just say that you're just looking for points on the chart that have made previous highs or previous lows, or you see horizontal support. Across horizontal support, meaning that you see something to the left of the chart that has congestion in that area. 
So you're looking for peaks, you're looking for valleys, or you're looking for horizontal support. All right. That's my, that's my, uh, what's the word? That's my advice. All right. So let's do it again. So basically what you're saying, Mike, is if something breaks below it, right, it could be resistance. And if, if it goes above it and doesn't go back down, it could become support. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so let's let's draw this again. Give me give me a point. Somebody kick it off. Kick it off, Ken. Give me a point. Um, shoot, you can start really low. You can start at eleven fifty. Eleven fifty. All right. All right. Now, right now, I want you to justify the point. Why? Why eleven fifty? Uh, it is like, um, I mean, it's not exactly eleven fifty, but it's almost like three different touch points so depending on what you're looking at it could you know like I said it could break through that line and it goes down below it comes back up but I was just looking at it as touching three different um, candle actually it looks like four see it. okay no, good, good. good point good point I mean I'm so I'm not trying to grill y'all what, what I'm really trying to get you all into is is practice right and, and I want you to have a reason for why you're drawing a line where you're drawing it. That's all. You know, I'm, it, so I'm not trying to be, 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 you know, crazy with it. I'm, I'm just trying to get you to, you should be able to look at a chart and, and, and draw a chart uh, without a whole lot of hesitation because there's just, you're just looking for patterns. You just want to draw a line there and it doesn't have to be exact. You just want to have, you, but you, but you do want to have a reason for why you're drawing the line at that point. Because the the whole idea of support and resistance is to give you indication about what has happened in the past to let you know, is this particular area going to give you a higher probability of an entry or an exit? That's the purpose of it. And, um, okay, Mike. yes ma'am. So like with the chart, Okay. You I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Line. Hold on one second. I got to I meant to send this. He told me to send this. One second. Just tell him I said one, one second. I'm sorry. Guy just, he had called me. I told him I was going to send him a link and I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. So with the chart, and you have your support and resistance. And so at the top, that's your resistance. And so what I sometimes, depending on the, the stock um, with the resistance part, if it gets up to a certain point, because you drew a line and you're thinking, okay, so when it gets there to this level, then I might want to put a trailing stop loss on it because like what happened recently with you know this this thing going down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can you give me a quick second? My grandma, my granddaughter. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh no, go she ahead. she hung up. She hung up. Okay. Um, you put a straight a trail and stop loss on that stock because if if say say I bought it at uh, this one down here says eleven dollars. Forty cent, mm -hmm. and it shot all the way up to nineteen something. And then and say it's, I think all the stock is volatile. But if it gets up to like nineteen fifty, and I put a trail and stop loss on it, which means that it can trail it up as high as it can go. But if it starts to fall again, and I can, I can say, you know what? I think I'm gonna put five shares on the chopping block just in case it falls again. At least I'm not gonna lose all my money. And it'll go back into my my um my buying power, you know. Mm -hmm. So I look at these charts for that reason. To to determine this is where wait a minute now my daughter my granddaughter calling me back I'll put you on mute. But that's that's fine. what I'm doing. Okay. Yes ma'am. So so give me a I think uh my other brother joined. Hey, brother. How you doing? Dick. Got, got uh, Lorenzo Martin. He's joining the call, guys. So welcome, Lorenzo. 
Yes, sir. All right. So we're just going through some charts right now, and I'll catch you up later, D. Um, but yeah, so 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 Sharif, give me a give me a line, give me a support line. So I would go right around fourteen. Okay, just 14. because of the, conge- the congestion that's in that area, maybe a little lower, but right, just the congestion that's there. Okay, congestion there. So we draw support and resistance lines here on charts. Uh, so that that would be a support line, right? Yeah, it'd be support because it's higher than where you currently is. So you currently are. So yes, that would be support. All right, somebody give me another line. So Angela's on hold, so I'd leave David. David, uh, we want to go 1952. All right, 1952. Yes, sir. Give me another line, Ken. Um. <clears throat> oh, and I'm sorry, David. Why? Why 1952? I need a reason. Uh, because that's the peak I've seen on that day. Yes, sir. All right, Ken. Yeah, just go back to that 1591, I guess. 1590. All right. Why? Uh, just, like, just so many, just like the trend, it always comes back down around that area. Okay. You know, it'll break through, go up, come back down, you have it all the way over, you know, okay. where the mouse is, all the way back. See where it just keeps going up, going basically okay. around that area. Um. So now I'm going to ask a, a, a targeted question. Do you all see anything between 1952 and 1590? 1952. Yeah. Okay. Give me a line. Give me a line. 1650. 1650. 1650. Okay. 1650. All right. Any anything else going up? Yes. Yeah, There's some more stuff on there. All right. Tell me the line. Uh, 1750. 1750. Why? Man, they hit like five, six, seven, eight times. That's all I need. Yeah. Anything else going higher? There's some more stuff on there. I'm trying to get on my phone. All right, just tell me, Ken. I, I'll move it. Just tell me where to stop. Uh, yeah, you can go right around 18. What is that? 18. 50 or right, 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 17, 19. Yes, that's what it is. What, right where I am or, or higher? Uh, higher or lower? A little bit higher. Higher. Okay. Oh, uh, no, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I was trying to talk. She didn't came in. Don't be dumb. Um, <laughs> don't, be, don't be messing with Ken. Distracting me. Right. Uh, so, what you got? I guess you could just do the eight, 18. Trying to zoom in on it. Okay, eighteen. No, that's, that's that's valid. But so so you know, all right. And and so again, all we're trying to do is just draw support. Where areas on this chart that it got to a peak? So let's talk through it. Let's go from the left to the right. All right. Looks like we don't have anything to the left because we can't see to the left of there. So here we see that we came up. Looks like we got some resistance area there. We came back down. This area here corresponds with this area to the left. You go to the right, that's also another area that it got up to. Go to the right again, there's another area. So that there is just gonna show me. That's support, that's support, that's resistance, that's resistance, there's a line, right? So, so, so it makes sense to draw that line. That's a support area there. It came back and that became a resistance back down through. So that line makes sense. All time high makes that makes a line, right? So we address those first three lines. Here, that you came down, you bounced here at this uh, area, you came through again, it cut through, it didn't hold, it came down further, it went back up, it pinged this line, couldn't hold, dropped back down, came back through again, broke through it, came back down, touched it, and bounced off. That's a line, right? 
below here, you came back down. There's really, you can say that you're in this general area where it was about, but if you wanted to adjust that down a little bit, to me, I would go there for, for this point here, right? For this point and that point. Got a little congestion, came up, hit that support area, came back down, hit the, I mean, hit this resistance area, came back down, hit this support area. Go to the far right, where you had previous history here at this area, look at how it corresponds, where this was previous resistance here, at that point here, at that means support here, support here. When it went down back below it, that became resistance here, 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 where that was resistance on these first three points, went up, got above it, then it became support for here. But that's the same horizontal line. You want a line there. All right, here, you got down to this point here on the left. And if you took the width of that, I would draw this line here. Cause you got this previous area here. You scroll to the right. You got almost close here. Definitely hit there. Definitely hit there. Broke back through here. So you got one, two, possible three, not exactly close, but four. So a line there. Here, anytime you start to see stuff at the bottom, like rounding stuff, that it just gets there and bounces, get there and bounces. It's just a point. So this this 13 area, you know, a little support there, resistance here. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Resistance here, resistance here, resistance here, resistance there, right? To the bottom side, you kind of hit it a little bit. Uh, I mean, I said resistance on all those. I meant support on all those. On the bottom side, you got a little resistance where it hit back there. You can also draw this line here. You went up through, it came back down, you bounced, went sideways, you bounced on that again, right? Came down here, you bounced down. You got a little bit of congestion in here, but this would probably be the major point. So are you, so again, that's, that's one way to look at it. Another way is just where, where are all the peaks at? Where, where the peak? Or, 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 or a valley, that's a valley, 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 kind of horizontal valley, just the bottoms. I'm just All I'm doing is just drawing bottoms. And then, you know, then you just draw a top, right? Ah, didn't mean to do that. Draw a top there. Okay. Draw a top there. All right. Peak again now let's just now let's just let's just take all of those and let's just make them horizontal lines from what I drew hey that was your hot cocoa good hmm? and it looked pretty close to what we had before you know we save uh I didn't draw this I didn't draw these lower but so you just, that, just got, just got the way you just the way you just charted that way made so much more sense to me. <laughs> Did it? Okay. And and and, yeah. and and if that and if that way works, so okay, let's look at let's look at a new chart. Let's look at a child different new chart. So you say you like the way that one was. So you just start with your little line. Do I have where do I have peaks? All right. Peak. Peak. In the rest. Peaks. Peaks. All right. Do all your peaks, right? Then you just start. Then draw your bottoms. Bottom. Bottom. Uh, maybe a little bottom here. Maybe that was not so pronounced. And then just draw your absolute top and bottom on the chart, generally. All right. Mommy will be home soon. You guys don't want to change clothes? You're going to be in PJs all day? All right. Here. Here, right. So, so that, you so being PJs all day. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't speak David. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, you good. Um, so if 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 so if that if that's where you are, then you just come through and you just draw, draw them back, right? Just and again, you just want to get the general area if it's if it's not exact. And if you can get and so in this one is very close to this one. If you want to split the difference and go in the middle to count for both of those two points, you can take that. Does that help? 
Sharif, you said that yeah, that, like way, that. that way of charting yeah. is, is better for you. Okay. Yeah, that makes that makes that made, made everything clear. I see okay. it now. Yeah, so for me, like if I start, I'll just look at. So if I look at this chart, and that's one I already got something on. So if I look at the chart here, I'll I'll just start doing it like this. Uh, let's see. I'll, I'll take the major stuff that I see. Okay, so let me let me, let me back up. Let me let me talk through because I'm not I'm not saying anything of the draw. Top of the chart. That's my reasoning. Uh, horizontal support here. I got I got two points. Uh, I got about four points right here. I uh, got a couple points here. Uh, bottom of the chart. All right, now let's see what we got. We got a little junk in here. Let's see what I can do. Like I say, got a little area there. Really doesn't have anything to correspond with it. Got a point here, point here, point here, point here. Uh, it looks pretty good here. If I'm not exactly right there, I can move it up, right? Ah. So I can, I can come back and not adjust it. So I, I probably draw mine more like this than the other format that I just showed. But, you know, and I probably would come somewhere in here. It's a little, it's not exact because I got that peak and I got this bottom here. And then I also have this bottom here. So I probably to get to get this point, this point, and this point, I may just split the difference and just go here. And if I say, but I got this piece over here down at the bottom. So if I want to incorporate that just a little bit more, uh, I can pull it here and say, okay, try to try to take this point, this point, and this area without drawing three different lines. I may just use one line and, and correct it a little bit. For here, I can definitely do this, right? Here, 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 bounce, bounce, right? And if I wanted to be, you know, eh, it's really not much in there. You got this little point here, you got that little point there. But it just give me, now, so you drew the lines. Now, how does this, now how do you trade on this? So you say, okay, if I get back down to this 34, 37 level, I wanna look to, I wanna look to be a buyer here. If I get back down to 35, it's even stronger here. I get to this 31, I got so much history back here. I got four times of this thing bounce. So the more horizontal support, so when you start looking for strength, the more horizontal support that you have here, you got, you got one, two, three, four points here. This has been an area that's, that's a lot of strength. Whereas here, I got, I got, I got support but I don't have it as long. You got more time in this area to go sideways. And this is building, and this is what they'll call trading in the range. So if you just traded this as a range, matter of fact, let's extend this. Ah, let me do this, let me, let me show you. All right, so you got here, you got in this general area, went up, came back down, bounce. Went back up, went above it, came back down, bounce. Went up halfway, came back down, bounced. Went up, got above it, broke back down through it, went sideways a little bit, came back down, bounced. Went back up, came back down, bounced. This is just a range. You could trade that range. So you got at least one. So if you're just going uh, buy low, sell high. Buy here, sell here. Buy here, sell here. Buy here, sell here. Buy here, and you could have sold here. Do it here as well. Buy here. I didn't get quite enough. Uh, and if you if you wanted to say, hey, cut this in half, sell here, get back, sell here. Then it. But then once it broke out above here, then it started to establish a new a new bottom. And so you can use that along with trend. And you can just say it broke out of the range. But once it broke out this range here then established a new box higher. So it's almost like you can layer this box on top. It's a new range. See what I mean? So you see how this, how this kind of stair steps? You see this? Broke out, new range. Broke out, new range. Broke out, came back within range, went sideways a bit, then it broke out, established a new range. But look at how these corresponds to these lines. Breakout, breakout, 
break out. Does that help? Yes, no, maybe? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. So the, these are the things you want to, and, and that's just a, that's just a trend. It's just riding a trend. All right, so I know we, we've been on a bit. Uh, definitely thank you all's patience. Sorry, Dick, I didn't get you that. I I said it. I said I was going to send it right away, and I forgot. And we were talking. I was like, oh, snap. I didn't send that to Dick. So uh, sorry I didn't I didn't get it to you right away. But uh, it's going to be 10 o'clock Saturdays. That's what we're going to do, Dick. I'll add you to our uh, distribution list so you'll have them when we go forward. And uh, if you want to hang out, you know, I can just catch you up on a few things. Uh, but for everyone else, definitely appreciate your time. If you all have any other things we want to cover before we depart, I speak now if ever hold your peace. Just want to say thanks, Mike, man. I appreciate it. Great information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I, and you know, I want y'all to use it. Use it during the week, you know, chart up, go through and chart these things up. Start getting your, your portfolio list together. Look at what you, you know, go back and look at your portfolio and see what it did this last weekend. Go back and look at some of those charts, you know, around the broader market, NASDAQ, Dow, or the S&P and see if it, if it corresponded. I, I think it did in a lot of ways, but you know, you all's portfolios are, are a bit diverse. So you can see, you know, what it's done. Uh, well, cool. But when everybody, you are charting, you start with the yearly chart? I, I'm, us, I'm usually on a daily. I usually start with a daily. daily. Now, sometimes I'll go out to a, I'll go out to a weekly to look for confirmation. So, so, so look at this here. So this chart only goes back to, what is this? This is uh, October 19th. So if I go to a weekly and go back to October, October 19th, right here. This is this is about all that chart show me was up to this point, yeah, up to here. But you can see how these lines from here to the left they still obey. You see that, and, and we wasn't even charting that. So history, yep. this this is it gives you good reference points on this stuff. All right. So yeah, you can definitely look for confirmation in a larger chart or just to see, because sometimes you can look and don't see stuff on it. So for instance, um, great, great question, Sharif. Let me, ah, let me change this. So look at this. If I didn't go back and if I didn't look at this history here, I wouldn't know these points to the left. So to me, this 37, biggest back to 37, it's a buy. Just because look at all this history I got. I mean, going back to 2016, 2019, 2020, and that's the pandemic low. Look at that. Look how that pandemic low corresponded to that low two years prior, which corresponded to a low five years prior. That's crazy. That's crazy. You buy here, that was a money trade from 37 to... 39 and it's really not that much because it doesn't move that much but well to to 41 but you know you're pretty good here now oh i'm and i'm sorry i, no, I said that was a pandemic low this was pandemic low i misspoke pandemic low right here so but from 25 so let's let's zoom out all right so you're going back all the way back down here and so when it broke through so if i was a chart this line when it broke through this area it did stay there long. And so you had a, a huge bounce off of here. And you can see once you got up to this 31, you got a little congestion. It took some time to break through that because you had this prior history right here. So it had, it had some previous memory that it had to break. So you see you spent time right here. You see you spent some more time consolidating until you broke out of that range. Once you broke here, it really didn't look back from that 34 all the way to 41. So yeah, using using a larger time frame helps. And you can even go shorter time frame if you're gonna trade, you know, if you're looking actually to enter the trade. But uh, I typically start with a daily and I may go in or out, just depending on what I'm looking at. And once I'm in a trade, if, if it's a if it's a truly truly a trade and I'm like just trying to trade it for a few points or whatever, 
I'll go up to a 15 minute just to see what it's doing. Thanks for y'all's time.